Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Shano over here. We're talking about the Dodge Charger, the 2024 Dodge Charger coming up. And we're going to first get part, or get past, excuse me. We're first going to get past is the looks of the car. And I'm going to be honest with you, I have no complaints. Well, I have one. That rotary badge. I guess that means electric or something. I don't know what it means, but it's too Mazda. They need to they need to toss that rotary badge and just put SRT up front or the two slashes or the you know the stripes or whatever. But get rid of the rotary. Anyway, passing that other than that, I think the car is great. I think it's a good balance of getting rid of two and making one. Uh, they brought back the uh, that look of the original uh, Dodge uh, Charger. The inside, outside, it just looks fantastic. It has a hatchback, thank God. Not just a trunk. At this point in time, I think trunks are stupid. I think all cars should have hatchbacks, and every vehicle should have a hatchback. So I'm glad that's the that's the route they went. Um, so functionality of the car, as far as the hood, the vents, the lights, just like the interior, the the look, just the whole department. We're gonna get that out of the way. The whole department. Uh, it's it's a knock. It's a knockout winner. So saying that. Saying, you know, maybe some people are like, I don't know about the door panels or this and this and that, but I think overall, I just think it's a huge step for Dodge. I think it's a huge step as far as design. Um, now we're going to get to the the iffy part. <laughs> the part that everybody's talking about. Having no V8s is a big one. Having no V8s. Now, I'm going to say this, that they, they know they're going to lose customer base as far as people running over to Ford, running over to uh, GMC or slash AKA Chevy to pick up the Corvette, to pick up the, the Mustang, because it's going to have, well, at least <laughs> we're going to get that one out of the way, is that the Corvette is not going to have a manual unless they do something about that. But a lot of people that want the manual transmission hooked up to a V8, you know where they're going to run to. They're going to run right to Ford and get that new Mustang, which does look hot. So, and, you know, obviously it's not a four-door or it's a big car. It's it's a, it's a pony car slash muscle, you know, muscle slash sports car now. And, a, and the new one looks really, really good. Um, so a lot of people are going to be doing that. I hate to say that, but that's what's going to happen. Now, we're still going to have, they're still going to have the customer base as far as the, it's like a trade-off. They know they're going to lose some people, but they're making less. They're making only one car, not two. With so everything's kind of going to be built in like you know together. Like you don't have your EV, and then you have that inline turbo, and that's what brings us to the next section: is the two motor options we're going to have, which are going to start like. I'm sure there's going to be like a base model. I don't know about the four turbo they're going to stick in it. I heard that that come might come as a base like a base model with like a four turbo, which I, I, I would see that because the inline turbos are going to start at like a well over 400 horsepower. Unless they down tune it or maybe they take the turbos off. I don't know, but I don't think that's going to happen. So I think maybe a, you know, a, a really base model. Mo, mo, my, I would say opinion, I'm going to forecast it, is that four turbo, you know, base model, you know, possibly all wheel drive. Uh, but we in, we know that the inline turbo is in, the hurricane is going to be in there. We don't know if it's going to be all wheel drive or not. Uh, as far as I know, anyway, maybe know in the comments down below, down below if you heard anything about it. But the but having all wheel drive obviously with the inline turbo would be a benefit. Now for people looking at the department or people saying you know what I don't really care about the V8 I love the car. Uh, I was looking at maybe a BMW X4 or something in that in that area. Then you might be, uh, I would say, yeah, you know, looking over at Dodge and say it's a badass looking car inside and out. I mean, even the logo on the steering wheel has got some type of illumination. Attention to detail was definitely put into this car. Light years from the last the last models. It's just, it's not even like a, re it's like a, it's just a huge jump. And, and uh, it's not like a reskinned and stuff like that. So they, people are going to see that. They're going to see this car. They're going to get in it. And I think in the EV department, they're going to win too. I think people that are shopping for a boring ass EV, that's that. And most of them look the same. Most of them, the interiors are boring. And as far as the EV, which I'm not a fan of, but I'm going to say as far as the EV market, they didn't make a car built around an EV as far as like 
the way things have been going out there. They built a modern cha uh, charger and then put the EV in it. So they went the other way, which really works for them. So in the EV department, at least they have the best. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna say it right now. They have the best EV out there at this point. Now I know Ford's gonna keep the V8s and stuff like that, but I feel like that Ford eventually is gonna jump on the bandwagon and release their full electric Mustang eventually. Maybe for the next model year or something like that, or a hybrid or something like that. Who knows? But eventually that's gonna come. So. Don't get me wrong. A lot of people are, I know, I understand about the beats, and I would not take this car without one. <laughs> but if I was looking for a inline turbo, uh, you know, all wheel drive, and it would have to be all wheel drive, I wouldn't take this car just rear wheel drive with an inline turbo with a, you know, I would want it to do everything at that point. And so I'm looking at the hatchback, and so I, I don't see why it wouldn't have all wheel drive. So, that's, you know, that's where I would be, you know, I wouldn't mind that. If I was just looking for an everyday car, uh, all-wheel drive, has had to go to the store, you know, that type of situation, but I want it to be badass, then I think this car wins. I really do think it wins over all the v EVs out there right now, besides, like, hypercars or supercars that are, like, uh, you know, $5 million. But and we all know the price with this car is going to... That's why I said that might be a base model with a four turbo or something in it. Because it's going to be... It's going to be up there. Especially when the power goes up. Now the EV is supposed to have like... It's top level is supposed to have like over a thousand horsepower. Um, and it's... Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be all... The EV is going to be all wheel drive. <laughs> but the turbo, the inline turbo, I've, I've seen over 400 to... 800 and 800 plus horsepower for the inline turbo like two like like two options of power levels two options combustion or um, EV so if I don't think that's bad I think Dodge is doing the right thing the only thing they're going to do that's that is wrong is ditch the V8s and I think they're going to lose that department they would be 100% fine if, yeah, they have the inline turbo, they have the EV, but they have to have the V8, at least one V8. Keep the 5.7 or the 6.2, revamp it. Again, I have a, another video saying, you get, you know, the technology that Ford uses, technology that Chevy uses in their newer, newer V8s, bring that over to a, a newer Hemi and make it dual overhead cam with some type of variable valve system where it can adjust the valves properly to make more or less horsepower, save some gas, you know, yada, yada, yada. So at least have one option with the manual, and then they would be completely fine in my, in my opinion. I think that would be fine for everybody to accept their other packages. But again, they're not too worried as far as the loss of people not buying muscle cars anymore because they're going to have these big power plants. And people are still going to love this car. So it's like a little bit of a trade-off. They got less fined. They got less fines going on now. Because I heard they got fined like 300 and something million dollars. Um, for, you know, having supercharged V8s and they just suck gas and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I understand they get fined, but they made a crap load of money. But at the same time, they don't need to go all out they just need at least one v8 in their lineup that's a choice and they don't even need it doesn't even need to be supercharged or whatever and that's the bad hey sorry guys i had to cut the video right there for a second um you might hear my truck uh i do a lot of, a lot of my videos outside you might hear my truck in the background but i thought that would be a good sound for everybody as far as listening you know as far as this you know the whole ev thing so having that little bit of rumble uh, with the video, you know, I hope you enjoy, anyway, but I hope it doesn't, like, you know, interrupt what we're talking about, anyway, um, I'm gonna try to finish this up with, um, yeah, that's what Dodge needs to do, uh, I think that they're not, since they're, they're, they're gonna take a hit, but they're also gonna save money, 
and a lot of this technology is coming from overseas from the Peugeot department as far as the EV department and this and that but I think overall the car is awesome so I'm gonna give like the car itself is going to be awesome I don't I don't mind having uh, the EV option the inline turbo option I think that if, if both of them come all-wheel drive it's got a hatchback I think that people looking in that department for an EV or maybe just like I said someone's looking at maybe like the BMW X4 or vehicles in that segment they might sw they might come over to Dodge and say wow this thing looks badass it's got a lot of power uh, which it's gonna have and inside and out it just it just looks badass and to be honest with you I would definitely if I was looking at like an Audi or a, a Mercedes-Benz um and I understand those cars, like, as far as driving the Mercedes-Benz and stuff like that. But I would definitely look over to Dodge and say, okay, I'm looking at that. I'm miles, you know, you, what do you guys got going on? They got the inline turbo, too. They got an EV. They, it's got a hatchback. It looks badass. It's a badass-looking car. Um, and, you know, it still gives you some muscle. As far as not having a V8 and stuff, but it still gives you a muscle. It does give you a muscle car. But yeah, it's always gonna have that chip, like that net chip on its shoulder. But that nick on its, that 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 tick, I should say tick, uh, on its ass, <laughs> that it doesn't have a V8 option. So if if Dodge does come out with a new re, re like a revamped V8, and I think Stellantis needs to hear that. They need to say, okay, you know what? We need to get at least one stick, keep one V8, and then someone that walks in looking for that v8 manual has that option there and they also might consider taking the t you know test drive in all of them you know the ev the inline turbo stuff like that so again they're not going to go under they know they're going to lose a some type of customer base but they're also going to gain other people as far as again the bmw stuff like that they're going to gain that department and they're also going to save money as far as just not making two cars or making one that's universal. So that's the give and take that they're doing. But it's how hard they're going to get hit by the V8 enthusiasts. That's where they're going to find out. And I think they're going to have some type of backup. They can always make a new V8. So I think that's going to be on the table. I think a revamped Hemi, dual of red cam, yada, yada, yada. I think that's going to be on the table because they, you know, Dodge has been doing very well. So, if they can have their cake and eat it too, that's what they're 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 gonna do. Uh, throwing a V8 in there in the same transmission, the new revamped V8, and a lot of people want that in the truck. They want that, you know, in other models. So, I think that's on the table. I don't. Th I don't I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but if they lose enough, if it doesn't balance the way they want it to balance out then i think that they'll probably consider something you know in the next year or so and I, I i i can see it i can really see that i think that when if a few short years you're going to see something at the auto show you know when they make the splash after things come out after the other models end yada 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 I think after a few years, I think something's going to make a comeback. I'm like, we're bringing it back, but it's going to be better than ever. And they can do that. They can have a Hemi dual overhead cam, VVT, or some type of VTEC type system with a hybrid too on top of it with, you know, just like Ford does it. They, they hey, sorry guys, I had to cut the video. Um, I just wanted to finish it up with this actually is that yeah, we all we can all talk about the experience as far as the paddle shifts and the manual and stuff like that. But I think if if not, you know, Ford, you got to just make Ford, like Ford, just keep it going. <laughs> the manual transmission, the V8, and that's the experience. It doesn't matter how fast the car is. The car can go zero to sixty in in, in negative five seconds. Uh, it can it can go to the moon or whatever else it can do. But the, it's the experience of having a V8. It's the experience of shifting through those gears. And you and you can't replace that. You can simulate it as much as you possibly can, but there's just no going to be no replacement for it. But overall, I think the challenge, the, the new Charger is going to do itself as far as its packages and people looking in that department. I think it's going to do very well. And they're going to bring in new customers. They're going to get less fines, and that whole section is is good to go. 
but they are going to lose the V8 people. They're going to lose not all of them, but they're going to they're going to lose a lot of the V8 guys that want the experience of the manual. They want the even the even non manuals, but the V8 experience. And they're going to go over the Chevy. They're going to go to the Ford. And we're that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see how this whole thing plays out with them. Because I guarantee you, if they get hit hard enough. We will see a revamped 5.7 or 6.2 Hemi with brand new technology in it. And that's what they should have did a long time ago in my opinion. But I'm going to end this video. Let me know in the comments down below. I didn't mean to keep it too long. Later guys.